What was something that happened to you as a child that you didn't realize was scary, creepy, dangerous until you got older? A clown came to my birthday party. I was two and the clown pulled out what us kids thought was a water gun but it was a real gun. He proceeded to take all the mom's watches and purses and left. This was in Mexico. I was three at the time and have three older brothers. They were putting a flashlight in their cheek and laughing at the reddish glow it caused. I was the annoying little brother so they didn't let me try. So instead, I decided to put my mouth around a nightlight that was plugged in. I'm 25 now and still have a scar inside my cheek from the shock I got. My family station wagon blew a flat in the middle of the night on I-95 as we exited the city of Miami. I was 5 years old and riding along with my mom, grandparent, sibling and dad, who was driving when the tire blew. It was the 80s, when the tire blew, everyone freaked out a bit, for some reason. My dad kept driving on the flat, even though we were traveling at a high speed. Eventually the tire wore down or fell off and we were riding on the rim, sparking down the freeway in the middle of the night. I remember the energy in the car turned to fear, but something was off. I was told when I was older, that my dad saw a man in the center median throw a strip of nails attached to something into the middle of the highway, which my dad could not avoid. Turns out, people were using this method to rob and carjack highway drivers in the middle of the night. My dad somehow was aware of what was happening and responded accordingly by not stopping to change the tire for several miles. Luckily we had a full-size spare. We changed the tire several miles down the road and made it home safely. TLDR, my family was not carjacked and who knows what else because my dad rolled with the punches. Riding around with my dad as he drove while so drunk he could barely walk. This happened every weekend. I saw him arrested for DUI several times and know of quite a few other times he was arrested for the same thing. This back in the 1960s and 70s edit. From the replies to this post I find it amazing that we all survived our childhood. I lived in a part of Dubby near some famous infamous high-rise flats or apartment buildings. But from the street I grew up. We could not see the bottom of the flats. There was a high wall in the way. One day we were out on the street playing when we saw a man on the top of the building. He was standing there for a while. Then while we watched, he jumped. Because of the wall, we didn't see him hit the ground. And in fact, it never occurred to us that he hit the ground. We were so young suicide was not a concept for us. We assumed instead it must have been something like a giant bouncy castle or trampoline on the other side of the wall, which the man jumped down onto. And he was standing there because he was scared of the height, but eventually jumped down. For years we refer to the man in the story as the trampoline man. Only when we were older, did we realize we had seen someone jump to his death. My parents were both dark haired. Dark eyed. My sister was brunette with olive skin. I was blonde with green eyes. My dad was a musician and we lived in a travel trailer so we could tour with him. I remember the nice people who took me into a toy room and asked me all kinds of questions about my family. And I remember them being at my grandparents house. Asking more questions and looking at family photos what I didn't know until later is that they thought I was a kidnapped child. Because I looked so different from my family. I didn't realize that we took the police hundreds of miles back to my grandparents house because that's where my birth certificate was. And all the photos that showed that my fuzzy blonde head had been in the family since day one. And yes. I was 100% theirs as proved by paternity testing during my parents eventual divorce. It's heartbreaking to think that the police were so sure I was this one specific kid that, according to my mom, her parents were told that she was found and refused to believe it was a mistake until they saw me. My sister's boyfriend tried to kiss me goodnight and he stuck his tongue in my mouth. I bit his tongue cause well. I didn't understand it. I was 12 and pretty sheltered about that stuff. I realized after I made out with my first boyfriend what he'd been trying to do at it. Since people are asking, my sister was 5 years older than me. So she was 17. If I remember right, he was a year younger, so he would have been about 16. She never found out about it. They broke up after a while but not before she lost her virginity to him and had a big pregnancy scare. I'm still not sure why he thought it was a good idea. 
Dude was just weird. I guess. Had massive family problems. Last I knew. He was a bisexual man engaged to a lady with two kids and another on the way. I still have no idea why it happened. Me and my sister hung out at his mother's place a lot because my parents were busy with volunteer fire fighting. They didn't know that we were basically being used as living house cleaners for this guy's mother. But when I was younger we moved into a house in the woods. It wasn't completely finished yet no screens on the windows. Unpaved driveway just dirt and rocks. Etc. We also had a huge wall spider infestation. Apparently the house was built on the headquarters of all wall spiders in the US. Wall spiders can vary somewhat in appearance. Some are grey and very hairy. Some are brown and more smooth. Freaked out when I saw one at first. But then I thought. They look really cool so as long as they don't bite me, it's okay. Anyways, eventually I just got used to them. Sometimes I'd see a baby wall spider and just sort of play with it, otherwise just let it be around while I do whatever I did as a child. Either way, they were everywhere. It wasn't until much, much later that I saw what young wall spiders really looked like, and the things I had been playing around with the whole time were brown recluses. My retired neighbor told me I was pretty and tried to stick his tongue in my mouth. I was 9. I didn't understand it but I knew I didn't like it. So I told my mother. She played it down but made sure I never went over there alone again. When I got older I realized how wrong it was and feel pretty lucky I got off that lightly. When I was about 8 I was at a friend's house with her little sister and stepfather. Whilst we were having dinner she did something to upset him. When she got up to leave he backed her against the wall and with a closed fist tried to punch her in the face. She ducked and his fist went through the wall. I don't remember what happened before or after but I remember that moment vividly. When I was about 6 I got approached by the head teacher in school telling me I was special and he took me out of lessons for a day. Locking me in his office to watch me do word searches and just sit there. He called me his little hamster. I didn't think it was weird at the time. I though I was just special. Then I later found out years later he was found out to be a prolific pedophile and got sent to prison for abusing students. Mistaken pills as candy? L. I had a kindergarten teacher who always gave me extra attention. He would bring me little gifts. Hold my hand. Walk me to the bathroom. After a few weeks my mom started asking me questions. And I told her how he would take me into the coat closet for special talks and would give me lots of hugs. My mom took me over to where my dad was working and had me tell him. And then we all drove up to the school and my dad beat the crap out of him. The next day I was put in a different classroom and I didn't see him at school anymore. When I was in 6th grade I walked into a math class for the first time at the start of the year and he was the teacher. It all just kind of clicked in my brain when I saw him. What he had done and might have tried to do and why my dad beat him up. Needless to say, I went to the principal and made them call my dad and when they told us that, since nothing was ever done legally and all of that, he would keep teaching and he was the only math teacher my dad put me in a different school. This might be a little long. When I was still a toddler, around 3 or so, my mom and dad took my sister 10 years old and I on a trip to Toronto. We were towing a small trailer and I guess it got to flat for some reason my parents unhooked the trailer. Spread a blanket and left my sister and I to watch it while they drove to a repair shop note. We were on the 401 highway which is a divided 70 miles per hour at the time speed limit 4 lays freeway. There couldn't have been a repair shop for 60 or more miles. They took off for what seemed like hours. Could have been. I was 3 so we are sitting there and a station wagon pulls to the shoulder and comes to a stop. By the time I noticed. A middle-aged man had scooted to the passenger side of his car, opened the door and was whacking it for all it's worth I just stared at him because I was curious and my sister said, don't look and he'll go away. I thought she said, don't look or he'll go away. So I pretended to cover my eyes and stared through my fingers because I thought she wanted him to stay in any case. He finally finished up and left but came back after a fair while. He must have taken the next off ramp and doubled back because he showed back up again doing the same thing by then. I had figured out my sister was afraid so I tried not to look as much at it. I should have mentioned that I am female he must have left. And after a long time my parents came back for us. That part is all hazy. I just remembered the weird man. 
At no point was I frightened because of my trust in my sister when we got home and we went out to play. I told all her friends that I saw a man stretching his dink. Which they found hilarious I only realized many years later how much danger we were in and how irresponsible my parents were. All I can think now is my poor sister. The first time I read whacking it for all it's worth. I thought you meant the guy was hitting his car door for some reason. Made the unintentional surprise twist at the end all the more sickening. A man pointed a gun at me when I was 6. I was in the backyard playing when two men walked by, I don't remember any details of their appearances, just silhouettes. They stopped and one of them aimed a pistol at me, I didn't feel any fear. But I almost nonchalantly stepped behind the nearest bush, like I knew what a gun was from TV, but didn't really grasp the idea of death as something that could actually happen to me. One of them said, oh never mind, or something in a similar tone, and they walked away. When I was in preschool I ran away from the school, walking in areas with traffic. Along with being offered a ride help several times I was being punished for not helping with cleanup so I was sent to a back room. After a few minutes I got bored and realized the exit door was open. So I walked out. And began to walk home. The school was right in a city area with tons of traffic and such. And as I walked home numerous people stopped to ask if I needed a ride help where my mother was. I was probably 5 or so. Ended up walking for a while then getting a ride home from a cop. Later learned that a teacher there was fired because of me. Didn't happen to me. But happened to a friend he was riding his bike and was stopped by a guy who asked if he was lost. The guy got out of the van and approached my 6 year old friend. My friend was still on the bike but in a resting position. He was making casual small talk. Asking if he needed a ride. He said he'd put the bike in the back of his van. And then he grabbed my friend's bike with one hand on the handlebars and one hand on the frame. My friend luckily was able to speed off and get away. And the when he finally got away he thought, damn, that guy almost stole my bike. I was visiting my auntie in Sydney, Australia. At the time I was 4 years old and it was summer so we were on the beach and it was hot. If anyone knows beaches in Australia there are hundreds of people playing in the water edge. Because it was the 80s kids played without care and parents kept a loose eye on what they were doing and on this day I was playing at the water edge with two family friends both girls aged 4 and 6. Long story short a man approached us and said he had something cool to show us in the caves and rock pools around the corner of the bay. As a kid this was awesome so we followed him. Our parents were watching the water's edge and three kids they thought was us. We followed the guy to the cave and he told me and one of the girls to wait outside while he took the six year old into the cave. He digitally raped her but got spooked when he heard people searching for us. After that all I remember is doing facial recognition with the police and getting Burger King. Which was sweet. Looking back I could have been raped at the age of four. Scary as all hell. When I think about it as an adult TLDR, I was abducted from the beach and nearly raped. We had a house up in Maine that was built in the 1920s but some guy who eventually went off to fight in World War II. He sold the house in the 60s to my family and we've had it ever since. When I was a kid, my brother and I slept in a bunk in a small room beneath the attic. It was more of a cottage than a house. Well, I always noticed these weird hinges on the wall even though there was no door or window. It was just a wall. Keep in mind my mom and her cousins used to come up in the 70s before I was even born. So I was the first person who noticed these hinges. I went back to the house for the first time a few years ago, when I was 18. And I saw the hinges and asked my uncle about it. He said he never noticed it and when we investigated, we realized there was a hollow space in the wall. After finding a sliver that must have been the trap door, we wrenched it open and inside. There was a fully loaded shotgun and a list of names on old yellow paper. The top of the list was our very old, very grumpy next door neighbor I'd been sleeping in a room with a shotgun and a hit list for my entire childhood. I hitched a ride with a stranger when I was skipping school turns out he was a navy guy on leave with kids of his own. When I was about 11 or 12 my friend same age invited me over to this guy's house. He was about 30. Fat neck but fedora type. He said he was a video game tester and got games early for Dreamcast and had a souped up Sega Genesis that played games extra fast anyways he took us into his basement of an apartment complex, where he had a pallet with a bunch of playboys on it in his storage unit. He let us grab a few and we went back up to his place. He then said we could keep them but only if we jacked off first. 
First he wanted us to do it by him. Then he said we could do it in the bathroom and just show him the cum to prove it. At that point I was weirded out and I said we had to go. I think my friend went back a few times and I never really thought too much about it but now it's really terrible. Had a guy try to take me home from school. Said he was there to pick me up. Luckily my mom's friend got me in time or else I don't know what would have happened. When I was a kid around 6 or 7 a boy in my neighborhood who was 12 at the time would take me to his room and take advantage of me. Because there was no penetration I never thought of it as rape or molest or whatever. My family never put away the leftover food. It would sit out on the stove or the counter or whatever. All night. In the morning it was put away. AMD leftovers were eaten as normal. Now I love room temperature food and have a strong immune system. I used to think Happy Tree Friends was kinda funny. No, I can barely watch it. I swear things like that get worse with age. When I was a 6 year old little boy, I was passing by a 55 year old man on an airplane. He said oh, you have a nice body. At the time I thought to myself, I guess I have a nice body. It wasn't until years later that I realized how creepy that whole ordeal was. Okay. So I knew it was dangerous then. But, it saved a life. Well, every few years. During the summer, my family would have a get together at a timeshare. So, one of those vacations a couple of my cousins, who had to both be either 8 or 9 are playing on the back deck of one of the housing units we had. So, there's this fencing around the sides of the deck and off to one of the sides is one of those old black Weber charcoal grills. So, my one cousin, Joey is chasing after the other one, Lenny. Well, Joey hopped over the fencing and was running down the yard when Lenny tried to catch up. But Lenny wasn't all that nimble. Lenny ended up losing his balance while trying to scale the fencing which was about waist height. As Lenny is falling back I see him kick the Weber grill. Lenny is now on the floor on his back. And the Weber was about to fall on him. I run across the deck and push the grill out of the way. It hits the floor. Everyone is gasping and either scolding Lenny or thanking me. Well, one of my aunts noticed that the charcoal spilling out of the grill is still red, meaning the grill was on. At that moment my right hand, the one I used to push the grill, swells up like a damn football. Lenny was so freaked out and thankful that when we all had settled down and I got my hand all hallowed up and wrapped, he held my Uno cards as the rest of the cousins played one intense game of Uno. Fast forward to 2008. Lenny was killed in Iraq while serving in Operation Iraqi Freedom. At his wake I told this exact story and I broke down. Like. Full blown meltdown. My dad used to let us ride in the back of the pickup truck all the time when going down the highway. Sometimes we would even sit on the side of the bed near the cab. New church. New priest and he really liked me. He would shake my hand and squeeze it really hard. So hard I thought he might break it. I would avoid him when I could as I wanted to keep my hand working properly he's now in jail. Yep doing bad things with kids. I went to the house of commons on a tour when I was about 10 or 12. I had a great time. Sat in front of the dispatch box. Had a drink in the commons bar etc. Then we ran into this sweet old man who was very nice gave me a hug and did some magic tricks for me next to the woolsack in the house of lords. Little did I know that that was Lord Jenna. Who because of his Alzheimer's will not be standing trial for pedophilia. I remember when I was little I was looking for something in drawers in the kitchen. Batteries or something. When I accidentally dropped an old thermostat in the ground and a cool metallic liquid started to spill out of it, I called for my sister and we were both like what is this stuff? It's cool we both played with it for about a minute I too before we decided to clean it up. Later on when I'm in middle school chemistry class the teacher starts talking about mercury a metallic liquid and I'm thinking to myself hey I know that then the teacher adds the highly toxic substance then I'm like hum that's no good. But as far as I'm concerned nothing happened to me or my sister TL. DR me and my sister innocently played with mercury when we were little. When I was a child we lived in a mobile home in the boonies. 
the closest post office was 25 kilometers away and the nearest police station was over 100 kilometers away. As a child growing up with super poor parents we never had much except our imaginations. However, we had a neighbor just across the road who I would occasionally visit. He lived in a single room cabin which contained a bed, stove and sink. Looking back I now find it odd that he had a drawer full of candy. When me and my brother would visit he would give me and my brother fruit cups and handfuls of candy and would sit with us outside his cabin. Sometimes he would let us ride his electric bike around a path he had worn onto the soil around his house. When my mother and father split I lost touch with him for a few years. When I came to visit my father for the summer a series of cop cars were at the old man's cabin. They then went down the road to another neighbor with a young daughter whom had visited the old man. Naturally me and my brother followed the cop cars on our bikes and in one of the cop cars was the old man. He was hunched over and sad looking. As the cop cars left he waved goodbye to me and my brother. Someone burned down his house a few days later. I found out he died in another city a few months later. Apparently he had been molesting the girl. Looking back I always wonder if it could have been me. Once during a kid's summer camp program we were at one of the local parks and there was this guy showing us these scars on his palms and feet claiming he was Jesus. He was also wearing a fedora. It was the estimata. Thank you. Thanks for watching our videos. We work hard to make sure you keep coming back for the content we produce. And if you like this video, please feel free to subscribe our channel. We would love to hear your own stories in the comment section below.